Howdy there, YouTubers. Welcome back to my teeny tiny channel. It's been probably a few weeks since I brought a new car home, so I'm probably uh, overdue. I'm gonna load up the trailer and let's go see what we can find. Outside of, I keep wanting to say Hutchins, but that's like the other Hamilton. side. Hamilton. Hamilton. And this is a 91 Dodge Dakota with a V8. Super cool. You need to keep the root and put that like in the truck. Is it stuck in there? It's stuck in there. All right, we'll just leave it. Leave it stuck and we'll see how long it can stay stuck for. I left that branch stuck in the DeLorean for as long as I could. Oh, you did? Yeah, it eventually fell out though. Time to get this thing loaded and back to the shop. AKA my driveway. Should I bother locking the door? <laughs> Might want to get the keys out. Oh yeah, keys, I forgot about that. Should probably put it in gear so there's where the tires sat in the mud because how long has it been sitting I think about five years five years this was the resting place it's like dinosaur tracks <laughs> water out of my faucet at my house has more pressure than this. That didn't do squat. That was literally just a waste of three bucks. So now I have to go home and use my power washer and hose and all that and actually do what I thought I was going to be able to do here. I have my power washer set up. So we're going to try this again. I know mine's going to actually work. <laughs> sort of rinsed down and I popped the hood just now and this is what we're working with looks like all kinds of critter stuff in here Ooh, oh yeah that's not good uh, yeah I guess I'm gonna power wash this in here all kinds of critters been living up in here I think it's gonna be a cool little truck I mean it's it's a small compact little truck it's got a v8 it's 90s it's got a lot going for it seats are out and this is my starting point <laughs> Definitely uh, cleaned up a lot. I know it may not come across on film with the carpet and stuff, but if you saw it in person, this carpet is probably good 90% better than what it was. Seats actually came out really well. Uh, they weren't horrible to begin with. Obviously, more better. No more rat and mouse poopies, and not that there was a lot inside. It looks like they mostly nested underneath the hood. Oh, you can still see a little bit left right there, but it was basically that everywhere. It was all underneath the, the 
side of the valve cover up underneath the air cleaner and stuff it was all through here i've never had a car that had that much nesting if you will you couldn't see any of this through here because it was just covered in just crap i do have some issues so it looks like the mice have helped themselves to some of the wires they definitely got all the way through on uh, these wires so i'm gonna have to figure something out there to get that reconnected my plan is to hopefully remove a lot of this emissions stuff it just there's no need for it anymore this truck is old enough so i just took a uh, compressed air and just blew this whole engine bay trying to get all the rest of that crap out it's just a little bit of what has fallen out <laughs> oh my god well i guess broken wires is kind of where i'm gonna end this one i don't even know what that is because i don't have a manual for this truck so i don't have wiring diagrams it looks important i'm gonna pull it apart and see if i can't put some wires on there and at least get those hooked up and then search around for any other broken wires so far those are the only ones i found that are actually cut in half some of the other ones i've found are just the sheathing is torn away and you know bare wires are hanging out is that an issue eh, probably Fingers crossed, I will have this thing fired up very, very soon. So once I get these wires back together, I'll put my jumper pack on and just see if I have any electrical function inside the truck. I don't necessarily need to try to turn it over or start it yet, but I wanna see what works and what doesn't and then kind of work backwards from there. If everything does work, awesome. She just needs a little love and I'm here to give it to her. I lied. I fixed the wires. I'm putting power to it. Let's see what we got. So I got my jump box in there hooked up. Let's see if it actually does anything. All right, we got a buzzer. Oh, there we go. We got stuff now. I don't know. Well, I don't even know what that was. Oh, all right, we got a radio. All right, we got some power to the gauges. Something sounds weird. Looks like lights are coming on. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Horn works. Hey, we got power. This thing might actually start. It will turn over. My battery pack, I think, is just, uh, I think it's dead. And we got a new battery. We got new ends, finally. I had to tear those old ones off. They were pretty, pretty gnarly. And I'm sure they weren't making good contact. I replaced those wires that were chewed in half. And now I think it's time. Let's bump it over and see what happens. You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna unplug the coil first and just bump it. Let's make sure the motor is spinning over. You know what? For insurance purposes, we'll we'll set it out here to make it look like we're safe. I don't know if this truck has gas in it. Either the fuel gauge is right and I have no gas, or it's wrong. I do have a little gas. We'll find out. I may not have gas. Huh? It wants to go. Well, it did a second ago. It's going, but it's not going. Going, but it's not going. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I don't know, but that's super helpful. <laughs> He knows what I mean. Good morning again. Well, it is fuel pump slash sending unit day for the Dodge Dakota. I got it to run. I got it to start and run just, I mean, briefly because it was running on like starting fluid, but I know that it will run. My fuel gauge was not working and I did not hear the fuel pump. Obviously a truck this old sitting so long, those pieces are gonna kind of rot away. So I was actually dreading having to replace a fuel pump at first I was thinking I would remove this liner and then just kind of cut an access hole because the fuel pump is on top of the gas tank, falls, I don't know, somewhere kind of in this area. People have done it. Uh, you gotta be very careful if you do it that way, but then you have to worry about getting it back in place and sealing it and blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to drop the tank, so I did some research. Turns out the bed of this truck is actually really easy to get off. Eight bolts two plugs for a wiring harness and then you undo you know the little hose for the fuel filler and the vent and that's it because it's just me i'm going to 
set up my little engine hoist here and I'm gonna rig some straps and see if I can't lift this up and just basically slide it back enough that I can get in there and work on the, uh, the fuel pump up there and pull it straight up and out. There's four on each side. One of the bolts goes right here. Very easy to get to. Moving forward of that one, you gotta undo these two little tubes here. That's your filler. There's your second bolt that comes out right there. And then the last two are, let's see, you don't have to take your bumper off. So there's one that goes right there and there's one that goes right here and that's it same on the other side here's your wiring harness you unplug right there same on that side and that's it i got super lucky and my bolts were not completely rusted they actually came out pretty easy you'll also probably want to remove your tailgate just because that's a lot of weight if you're doing it like i'm going to do it you definitely want to try to take as much weight off of this thing as possible before you get going I saw a video where a guy actually came in from the side and was able to lift it up and it worked but you've got your uh, rear tires in the way so I'm gonna take a stab at it from behind and hopefully that's a little bit easier maybe I can get a little bit closer and right dead center where the straps are gonna be I had a slight setback this ram was hitting the bumper so I ended up just pulling my bumper off three bolts two and then one over here for the little bracket that goes off here same thing over here two bolts and then one up here for that bracket and then I just undid the lights that uh, light up the license plate and just kind of undid the harness out of the little clips rather than trying to pull the clips and all that other junk so that's just gonna rest there and I should have room now hopefully I only needed like I don't know six or seven inches that's what she said no time but she did no time well looky there haha <laughs> it worked so this thing's up and loose and now I basically just gotta slide it back out of the way. Things are going my way. That can't be a good thing. Now I can get to this. Cool. cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And I have a little help from my friends, family. That's what I needed access to right there. So now I can take this all apart and lift it straight up and out and probably clean some stuff while I'm under here. Here is the assembly removed from the tank. You can see it's completely just rusted and yeah, no wonder it wasn't working. I just cleaned everything up and made sure I wasn't going to get any debris in the tank. O'Reilly's will have one for me this afternoon, and I will run down, pick it up, and get this thing hopefully buttoned up pretty quick. Here is the new sending unit in, finally. The one I got came with this grommet. I had to pull this out of the old one. That was a pain. This little piece up here did not have a grommet with it. I had to pull the grommet and this piece out of the old one. And I struggled for probably a good 20 minutes on this one trying to get it in there, heating up the rubber and spraying some WD-40, just trying to get it slick and pliable. And yeah, I didn't, didn't want to go in there. So between these two, I mean, that was a lot of wasted time. So be prepared for that. Be very careful of these clips when you take your fuel lines off. Make sure you take a picture so you know which way they go. And that's it. Everything plugged back in. I started the truck up and it does run. It threw a check engine light and I'm assuming that's because I don't have the um, fuel neck hooked up and it's probably just sucking air or something. I'm not sure. One thing at a time. It's been a day, but it's back together pretty much. I still have to put the tailgate on. But let's see if this thing fires up and if it will idle. All right, let's see what we get. Hey, my check engine light. Oh, no, there it is. I don't know, maybe it's a gauge. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's just because I really don't have that much gas in there. Hopefully it'll come back to life. Check engine light, I'm not sure what it's doing, but uh, it starts. 
it's sort of idling. I have a running truck now. Sweet! Thanks so much for watching. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Uh -huh.